Hello, welcome to another Toneless Landscape Oil Painting Demonstration. This is your painter in residence. I'm Francis McCarthy, and the painting I'm bringing you today is called Ochre Road. It's a 7x14, and I completed this last week. I have a little bit of a tale to tell. You're going to see it as uh, I'm doing it. Um, uh, based on some reference I found around, an uh, old uh, pictorialist photo. I, it had some issues, but uh, you can actually see for yourself if you want to tip on into the members area. Uh, you get to see the reference, 4K, no ads, $6 a month, and it's the real-time session as I paint in real time. So um, the struggle was real, and you can see it all there. But I love you too. You don't have to pay a thing to, to come around and check me out to uh, painting. Uh, and, you know, um, this is the whole painting session minus the uh, color mixing sessions which are uh, one of the benefits of being a member but you get to see pretty much every stroke I laid down here uh, just sped up so thanks thanks for joining me and hopefully uh, we'll get you a few kernels of information here so what went wrong I, well uh, I had uh, uh, several ideas with this one I wanted to work in this sort of uh, limited uh, tonal range so uh, just rusts, uh, cream tones, uh, uh, dark, rich uh, black tones, and things like that. No, no actual green colors or blue or even purple. Um, and even the red, all the reds are constrained to very earthy reds. Yeah, yellowy reds and oranges and things. So that was brief number one. Brief number two. I want a just loose, expressive brushwork. I didn't want to get all tweaky, you know. I don't want to get all detailed. Like, um, a lot of the times, these, like, um, seascape scenes I do, which are actual places, uh, you know, I, I have to get into the weeds a bit with the detail. But I didn't want that here. I just wanted it to be expressive and free. So, what was the issue, you say? What are you implying there was some issue? And there was. And... It, it, it was present in the reference too, but after I painted it, um, so you see how we have kind of this straight sort of horizon line, and then on our right, it kind of starts tilting down. That was in the photo, and it looks okay in the photo, it didn't really jump out. Um, but as it was drying on the rack, it was really starting to annoy me, like it looked off. And I thought, well, I just probably need to straighten the whole thing, I, but I had to wait for it to get actually dry. Oh, that's another thing you're going to see pretty soon here. Um, this is our drawing uh, session. This is one day. I uh, let this dry um, and then I started on the color. Unfortunately, uh, you just wait. You'll see what happened. I'll talk to you about it when that does happen. But uh, the color I'm painting with here is mostly uh, really leaning into the burn number. A little bit of perylene uh, black, which is kind of a greenish black. Uh, just to kind of balance it out, give me a little neutrality there. Um, I like burn number because it's a quick dryer, but uh, not as quick as I thought, you know. Anyway, um, you cannot uh, just, of course, uh, just copy what's in the photo. That doesn't make for good paintings. Funny enough, I uh, was uh, I have a studio at the Quarry Art Center, which is a publicly uh, public studio and then I have one in my backyard uh, which I haven't been using much because I tended to just go to the ah there you see what happened okay well I had the bright idea yeah you hear me telling the members what's going on I had the bright idea that I was going to wipe it down with some oil and what happened is all of the thinner layers disappeared completely and so a bit of a mess but I didn't let it stop me you know I just just painted over it and that's okay I didn't love that um, but the underpainting is the underpainting so um, you know uh, most of it gets covered up some of it does peek through but uh, yeah I gotta watch out for that all right just had to pause for a sneeze there so pardon me if there's a few sniffles uh, you yeah. know this is a home this is a homespun uh, video um, yeah, that really uh, disappoints me. But I've had similar th this that that effect you see there is the whole reason I stopped using black altogether because the black would like this was burn number based. So I really hadn't uh, properly wrangled with how long it had been dry. It was probably only a day or two, or maybe just a day. I'm not sure. 
um, but I shouldn't have wiped that oil over the top that caused that problem but you can get that kind of delaminating issue with uh, black while you're painting okay because the black takes forever to dry uh, that's one of the reasons so you look at back about two three years you'll see me doing underpaintings of black and I really do like like that as an underpainting color uh, although I have to say one of the things that's really groovy about like a burn umber base with a little bit of that perylene in there to balance it out. Is there still room for me to go darker? Now, um, uh, oh, so that's what I was saying. I was cleaning up the uh, the shed in the back, and I saw one of my, ooh, well, from 2012. It was just the underpainting, and I, I believe I'd, I'd mentioned on the channel before where you know, I would uh, take my own photo reference. Uh, I like to do that in the majority of cases, not all the time, but um, I took my reference image and then I took it in the computer and did a bunch of stuff to it. I had a scene that uh, was based on um, one of my trips to France. It was an okay scene. It has problems that I spot now quite easily, but back then I didn't really see some of the issues. But uh, what I was doing back then was I had a projector and I was plugging it into my uh, laptop. Um, at work and tracing the photo uh, directly onto the board with some charcoal and I thought that was really clever I thought wow that's gonna save a lot of time and um, it just added up to so many bad paintings because um, what works as a photo doesn't work as a painting and um, you know what I cover that um, pretty extensively and I cover working with photos very extensively in my book and here's an ad for my book and thank you for your patience and support and uh, it's not a long ad but uh, just gives you kind of a peek at what the book looks like um, but of course it's going too quick to read the text uh, oh, <laughs> just the idea although I don't flip through every page here I, I try and show you a lot of what's going on and um, I definitely cover all that in the book and um, so if you're interested in that uh, and you want a place where you can get all of my uh, ideas about painting in one place um, that's accessible, referenceable, um, researchable, etc., etc., it's the book. 60 bucks US and I uh, ship it. That includes international shipping, which is actually costing me more than the print cost, if you can believe that. Anyway, short run print cost. I don't do big runs of these uh let's talk so um now i did do a uh i really uh, this is just one of the so as as you get experience you come up with a lot of different approaches to painting and not just with your say brushwork or style but also color approaches like uh this is i would say rusty orangey uh approach here um now in the rusty oranges approach, uh, uh, one of the things that might define it is how far into the ochres I go, into green ochres or greens, because rust can start tilting into a green range pretty easily. So um, I didn't want that in this one. So I think you'll see one just a couple back as a tree. It's kind of similar color wise to this, but you notice that one has a lot more of the green sorts of tones and you can get that greeny sort of look real easy because the black will go into the ochre, uh, yellow ochre, and you know, it looks pretty green. Uh, as many of you may know, the basis of the uh, Mike's green that I use for, you know, a lot of my work is just black with yellow, acrylide yellow. Um, so and if, you, if you're new here, uh, you ought, ought to try that. Now you can use acrylide yellow or you can use like a, something like cad yellow hue, which would be the same thing. Um, yeah. So anyway, we premixed uh, a range of colors, like a little a string of colors, you know, from uh, reddish uh, dark, uh, from quite dark with some burn umber into it, black and burn umber um, for my darkest tones on over to the lightest cream color and along the way we're hit some uh, quite a lot of burnt sienna let's see if i can give you a list uh, just by memory of the colors in this so definitely burnt umber is a big player uh, burnt sienna also a big player cadmium orange yellow ochre brown ochre um that would be it white i put, used both my whites the titanium buff and the regular titanium in this, although not full strength. Uh, one of the things I debated, like I like to go a bit brighter in the sky than I did here, but 
Um, there was kind of this smoky atmospheric feeling to it that uh, I wanted to retain so I didn't want to go too contrasty. Um, now here's another thing I was going to chat about because I just finally got around to photographing uh, what's what hasn't been sold from the last six months right so a lot of times oh I didn't even used to put anything up in the store until it was photographed with my Canon at a high resolution um, since that time though I've just been using uh, 4k screenshots uh, to put things in the store and it's good enough to see very clearly what the painting looked like but you know what I love about the uh, taking the, uh, the photos with the Canon is that uh, I can zoom in and see every hair I can see a fallen hair from the brush extremely clearly I love that you know um, there's a lot of cleanup that's involved and I've gotten pretty lazy about that but if I ever uh, especially once that painting is out in the world it goes to a gallery or someone buys it from my studio or, or my online store it's gone I don't have any access to it anymore so um, you never know some images could have special mojo and uh, you really want you really really want to know that you had a super high resolution image so you can make mm, amazing prints or something if you wanted I'm not that into prints uh, you know uh, it's already oh it's saw a very interesting sorry this is kind of a burbly video but saw a very very interesting video that was about some of these immersive um, shows they have like uh, featuring Van Gogh or other artists and they kind of they kind of shoot the images on the walls and on the floor and the ceiling and you're supposed to feel like you're inside the work but funny enough it all reminded me of like low res uh, color uh, low res color reproduction you know prints like um, I saw a lot of that in the 80s you know before the um, printing technology is actually quite a bit nicer and um, art prints especially uh, you know you can do the, these G clays that have extra colors that um, you know are dropped out from your standard CYMK so one of the reasons like if you look in the old uh, art history books you know even the color they're full of black and white images which is a bummer but also the color uh, images in them tend to be somewhat lacking and not a very good representation of the actual artwork um, but one of the reasons I don't get into the prints is like in this uh, this immersive thing touched on it this lady was talking about how valid is this you know as opposed to just going to a museum and seeing the actual painting and the answer of course there is not very valid but um, it has this kind of cheapening effect um, as I think that the um, you know trying to sell prints that are um, supposed to be collectible you know limited and, and etc I mean, I, hey, I, 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 I'm a working artist and I sell a good amount of work, but I'm not a world famous artist, although that's going to change coming up. You guys are going to help me too. Uh, but uh, that's a topic for another video. Um, maybe there, uh, you know, maybe there, if you have every painting that comes off of your easel is sold uh, immediately, then it would make sense to. Um, create something affordable for people that you know I mean obviously you wouldn't be selling those works for um, hundreds you'd be selling for thousands you know and in a in a place like that it might be really awesome to be able to offer reproductions for people that um, you know aren't able to uh, get their hands on your originals in my case I'm big on affordable originals but you know that could change that could change you might want to tip into my store before it does because there's some pretty affordable things there like uh, I'll give you a for instance this painting is going to be I'm going to be putting it up there I'm going to put the price of this of US to uh, 250 249 on it now the exchange rate between the New Zealand dollar and the US dollar is pretty pretty vast right now um, our New Zealand dollar is not doing so good so uh, I still end up doing okay on it but um, the reason I do that is because I want it to get into someone's home, you know, um, and I figure I'll make it uh, reasonable, but I think it's worth way more. I absolutely do. Um, thousands? Who knows? The sky's the limit because it's one of a kind, you know, and it's very beautiful, but 
all that said we do if uh, we deal with uh, what we have when we have it and uh, oh by the way you guys just saw my whole session where I came in and straighten that out sorry I was burbling about uh, I got marketing on the brain because I'm going after that and then maybe bringing that up in some videos it's a problem we all have to face and deal with as artists and kind of the dirty little thing oh I thought I was done you saw me do the zoom in but I thought oh, I need to break that up and so I broke it up and we are done until they come back with another video for your edification and enjoyment do me a favor do me a solid take good care of yourself your family all your loved ones stay out of trouble and God bless you and your family